Hi, welcome back to Key Concepts in Technology, and this is week five. We'll be studying symbolic cognition and the symbolic cognitive technologies more specifically. So what is it about always being in language and other systems of symbols? What core human capabilities and needs drive the ongoing cumulative combinations of symbolic technologies that we're studying? The more we learn about our cognitive symbolic technologies, the more we learn about how they combine in cumulative forms of technical mediation that have also enabled human cultures to be cumulative, resulting in the accelerating chain of advances that we experience today. What's going on today in all of our internet devices and digital media seems new and unique, but the symbol systems, the capacity for technical mediation, and the social functions that we activate are ancient. Research programs in many sciences and disciplines are converging around the consequences of being the symbolic species in Terence Deacon's terms. A major discovery throughout many cognitive science fields is that the human symbolic faculty is the essential enabler of both human societies and technology. The symbolic faculty, that is the human capacity for symbolic cognition, is manifest in language, obviously the prime mover, and our ability to form many orders of abstract concepts, techniques for communication, and all forms of symbolic representation. Further research in archaeology, paleontology, anthropology, and evolutionary neuroscience shows that our early ability to devise durable external storage of symbolic cognition and artifacts produced a cultural ratchet effect that began around 30,000 years ago, coalesced in the ancient world around 2,500 years ago, and has accelerated ever since. Today, new combinations of technology and enhancements in the materials for symbolic representation and processing symbolically encoded expressions are accelerating in unprecedented ways. Computation and digital encoding exploits a master switch in our symbolic capabilities. And now we're bumping up against the limits of human abilities to make sense of all of our massive accruing data production. We're generating and storing more symbolically encoded data in a day that was produced in a whole century in eras not too distant from our own. So how did we get there? What is it about human symbolic faculties and the structure of symbols and symbol systems that enable us to develop cognitive technologies? Well, here are some key findings in the knowledge base at the cognitive science crossroads of linguistics, semiotics, and research on distributed cognition and technologies. First, Language and other symbol systems are based on rules and procedures for generating and interpreting new expressions. The generative and open combinatorial features of natural language give us a huge advantage in creating new concepts in new and unpredictable situations and communicating them through a whole language community. Second, all symbol systems have built-in features for abstraction, recursion, and reflexivity, or what we call the meta-function, that is using symbols to represent, describe, and interpret other symbols. Now, all systems are also intersubjective, they're collective, and they enable shared intention, group identity, and attention to collective tasks, features that make symbolic expression in language the primary means for communication. Societies and communities, large and small, and across long time spans, are formed by externalizing and offloading cognitive tasks and memory in symbolic artifacts for storage and retrieval. Everything from writing and artworks to computer systems, digital memory, and the stored information in our built environment. So externalized material and encoded symbols give us the store and forward capacity that we talk about in software and computer memory. Now think through the results of the human ability to create these abstract structures and the ability to implement symbolic cognition in all different kinds of material forms. Well, we can create 
all kinds of symbolic artifacts from cathedrals to image making technologies. We have the accumulation of written genres in vast libraries and all kinds of artifacts represented in museums. Hundreds of musical forms passed on in all cultures. Abstract knowledge represented in mathematics and science and art. And all the industries formed around re-implementable concepts for technologies, tools, and machines. So the next time you look at one of your device displays, think about how it's an interface to a deep dependent history that we're just at one point in. It's actually a view into a deep archaeology. Following from last week's unit on information and coding, we can discover more about how we exploit the features of symbolic thought and representation. We can encode meaning systems in abstract patterns of bits because the amazing built-in property of abstraction and reflexivity in symbol systems and symbolic cognition. And using the reflexive and meta features of symbolic representation, we can use software and digital representation to create many nested layers, digital wrappers around other forms of digital information and new combinatorial systems themselves. Let's return to our iPhone example. Now this interface device both presents the form and content of our technically mediated symbol systems, but it's also a great example of the meta-function in symbolic cognition. You'll read about Alan Kay, who designed an early model of a tablet and the Mac interface for Apple. He coined the term metamedium for the multimedia computer interface. He saw a way for computation and digital representation to become a medium for other media, a new combinatorial system that we use in many forms today. And we can go further in building out this system. The digital processes and materials screen display substrate, the software controlled meta medium, is also an interface to the way we think and act in a mediated world with collective, intersubjective, externalizable, embodied distributed cognition and agency. And this leads us to next week on investigating media and the principles behind technical forms of mediation.